Okay, in this video we will take a look at uh, <clears throat> finding volumes of revolution using the method of washers going around the y-axis. Now if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the first two videos on the washer method. Uh, in the last video we took two functions and rolled them around the x-axis and swept out the volume of revolution. In that case everything was in terms of x. Now the only real difference on this one, if you're going to revolve it around the y-axis, put everything in terms of y. And the, uh, when, if you do that, it'll look something like this. So let's start with two functions. Suppose we had the first one, uh, a straight line, y is equal to x. Then we also had y is equal to x squared. Now, we don't know where these intersects. We'll have to find the intersection points later on. But if we were to revolve this around the y-axis, it would sweep out a volume that would look something like this. Uh, now, <clears throat> the green shaded areas would be the solid parts, so if you roll it around the y-axis, it would wind up looking something like this right here. So, sweep it around the y-axis and it looks like that. Uh, now, the formula's changed a little bit. Remember, when you took it around the x-axis, it was the integral of the top one squared minus the bottom one squared. If you take it around the y-axis, now it's going to be the function on the right squared minus the function on the left squared, as you look at it this way. So we'll put these formulas up here where you can see. So the formulas will change to this. So again, uh, the function on the right squared minus the function on the left squared. <clears throat> now, uh, sometimes it helps if you take a look at a single uh, washer just to see what this looks like. So let's put a, a single washer inside this. And if you did, it would look something like this. So you've got an inner radius and an outer radius. And another way of thinking about this formula, if we did it this way, um, the way we've got it set up, the right one, the function on the right would be the f function. So the way we're setting this up, this would be f here, the function on the right. This would be g, the function on the left, if you look at So this one's on the left, this one's on the right. Or if you prefer, some people do it this way, make it be the, the inside radius. So this inside radius from here to here would be uh, g. And this outside radius from here to here would be f. So another way of wording this thing, you could, you could do it like this. Call it the outside one squared. So the outside radius squared minus the inside radius squared. So whichever way you like best. So either the right one squared minus the left one squared, or the outside squared minus the inside squared. Okay, now to solve the problem, uh, it actually involves... Uh, three steps. Now the first step would be to put everything in terms of y. So we'll go down and put our steps right here. So we've got step one is, and we'll put this, we'll just call it put, uh, put both in terms of y. Okay, let's start with the f function. And what it would look like if you've got, uh, this is going to be x squared is equal to y. So take the square root of both sides and you would get x would be equal to the square root of y. Now what this is going to be, this is going to be the f function. So there's the f function right there. Now let's do this one. You've got x is equal to y, and in that case basically you're done. You've just got the function x is equal to y, that will be the g function. So the first step is get them both in terms of y. So your f function would be the square root of y, and the g function would just be y by itself. So now the next thing you need are the limits to this thing. Now you're going to integrate, we'll put the dots up here, you need to know where the two functions intersect. So they intersect uh, here, and they also intersect up here. So what you're going to do is integrate it in terms of y, so it'll look like this from here to here, and you need to know what those two y values are. Now the thickness of this washer would be dy, so dy will be this little thickness right in here. So step two is to find the y limits. So we'll go to step two here. So step two, uh, find the y limits on the integral. So find the y limits. Now to do that, just take the two functions, take uh, f and set it equal to g. So if you do that, you would have the square root of y 
and square root of y is equal to y. And then just to be consistent here, we'll do black on these. So go ahead and square both sides and you get this. Uh, y would be equal to y squared. So if you squared both sides, you'd have that. Now I'll take this y and move it over here, which would give me 0 is equal to y squared minus y. Um, factor out a y. So I'll have y times y minus 1. And then set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So set this one equal to 0 and set this one equal to 0 and solve for x. When you set the first one equal to 0, you get y is equal to 0. So there's one of the limits. <clears throat> and you've got y minus 1 is equal to 0. Or y is equal to 1. And there is your other limit. Now where that is on your picture, let's go back up and take a look at it here it would look like this. Uh, so this is going to be y equals 0 right here, and you're going to integrate it all the way up to y is equal to 1 right there. So there are the limits on your integral. And now it's just a matter of evaluating the integral, so we'll go on to step 3. So for step 3, we'll just plug the uh, functions into this formula and run through the integral. So we'll put it right here. So Step number three is just to evaluate the integral. So evaluate. Okay, so the volume of revolution would look like this. The volume is going to be, and again we'll use this formula up here, it'll be the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times uh, the function on the right squared minus the function on the left squared, or the f function minus the g function. Well, the f function is the square root of y squared minus the g function is just y squared. The whole thing in terms of uh, y. Well, again, now at this point, just like any other integral, uh, Pi is a constant, so you can bring that to the outside. So you'll have pi times the integral from 0 to 1. Now this one, when you square, the square and the square root cancel out and just leave you with a y. Then you've got minus, this will just become y squared dy. So find the antiderivative of that, and you would have y squared divided by 2 minus y cubed divided by 3, both evaluated between 1 and 0. So what this is going to give you is, <clears throat> go ahead and plug in the 1. So this would be 1 squared divided by 2 <clears throat> minus 1 cubed divided by 3. And then for the second one, it would just be 0. So we'll have this one. Now when you plug in the, the 0, both those will just go to 0, so this one's just going to be 0. Alright, so that's going to get you to pi times 1 half minus 1 third. So put both those over a common denominator, we'll put them both over 6. So multiply this one by 3 over 3, and you would have 3, 6, minus, and multiply this one by 2 over 2, minus 2 6, which would give you uh, 1 6 to pi, or pi divided by 6. And what this would be, this would be the volume if you roll that thing around the y-axis. So again, let's go back up and take a quick look at the steps. Um, <clears throat> so again, starting with the initial two functions, uh, first of all, put both of them in terms of y. So you've got a, an f of y, this will be the one on the right, or the outside one, and g of y. Uh, so both functions in terms of y. Now you need to know the limits of integration, so the points at the intersect, set both the y functions equal to each other, and solve for y, and that will give you the limits of integration, in this case it turned out to be from 0 to 1. And then finally, just evaluate the integral. And when you evaluate the integral, you'll have the volume uh, that will be enclosed by rolling this thing around the y-axis. 
So that's an example of a problem uh, using method of washers going around the y-axis.